farmhouse friends welcome back to the farmhouse and more importantly welcome to our front porch we are so blessed to live in this 1860s farmhouse and have this beautiful farmhouse front porch it is my favorite place to come and read a book and visit with family and friends to sit here with a glass of lemonade or iced tea and just look out at all the beautiful nature and enjoy some downtime and I have to tell you, this has just slipped my mind. I have been so busy. Our weather this year has just been crazy. We had freezing temps right up until Mother's Day, and then we jumped right into the 90s. Both really uncommon for our area in Michigan, and the front porch just has been neglected. There has been things put out here when I'm working on something inside. It has just become a cluttered mess and I am so excited to get up here today and to make it that wonderful oasis. I hope you are inspired to tackle one of your spaces that is a calming wonderful oasis where you can relax, read a book, and enjoy some downtime. Let's jump in. Let me show you our current situation. I haven't done anything to this porch. Yes, my friends, that is a Christmas tree, and next to it, you'll see my massage table. I sat out here when I was working on the stair area, and here is a piece of insulation I keep between the doors to help keep the air out, and our weather has just been fluctuating, so I didn't get those put away. And here, if you look at the chairs, those are actually the throw pillows for fall decorating and they are still here. You can see my table is worn out and look at my rug. It's faded, it's stained. I'm missing a rung over there and I'm missing another one here. Do you call them rungs? Bannisters? Bolsters? They're missing. And look at this chair, just look how dusty and dirty it is from the spring putting in the crops. We're surrounded by fields, so it gets pretty dusty here. I'm gonna start off with just clearing off the porch.
I'm going to get into my cleaning, but I'm going to start from the top down, and that way everything that's at the top ends up on the floor, and when I finally clean the floor, I'm cleaning all of it. And the thing is, brick, you really don't see the dust, the dirt, and cobwebs as you do on a light colored or a white house, but trust me, it's here, friends, and it is a lot of mess right now. As you can see, we have a lot of loose nails here, and that really affects the longevity of your wood. It makes it shift and it doesn't stay in place. Also, these are pretty rough to step on, so I'm just gonna take a few minutes and go ahead and snug this all up and make it safer and stronger. Hey guys, now we've done some cleaning and a little maintenance, and now we're going to get to the fun part. This is my favorite part. It's really hot here today and have a fun way to cool off. Ah, uh, yes, the power washer. More cleaning, but this is always so much fun. Who else loves to power wash? This was double rewarding because you can see it's just taking off years of dirt and grime. And when you live in a farming community, it doesn't take long to get that all built up. And as it's taking off all that dirt and soil, making it look so much better, the mist is coming back at you and cooling you off on such a super hot day. It was well into the 90s here, so this felt great and looks great. And I just had a great time taking all this dirt off the house.
you believe that transformation with that power washing did to this decking? It is just gorgeous. And now we're on to the next step in our project. We're not gonna stop there with just the power washing. I'm gonna go ahead and put down some Thompson's water seal. I picked up a couple containers of this last year for a project I had going on, but I never got to the project. So this is what I had on hand. I'm pretty sure I have enough and it's out of stock everywhere I've looked. So we're just gonna go with it. I don't know what color this is going to be once it's on the wood. I'm pretty sure the wood is a pine wood. This is not the original porch and I'm going to try to find the photo of the original porch taken in 1907 to show you what that was like. So I'm sure the porch has been redone but I'm sure it was quite a long time ago. So the color I'm using is called pine cone. I don't know what that's gonna look like on this, but I'm sure I'm gonna be happy with it just because it's going to be sealed and the longevity of the wood is going to last so much longer and it's going to be easier to keep clean, resist mildew and staining. So that makes me happy. And I'm gonna to try to do this and not paint myself into a corner like I did the other day. Actually, it wasn't a corner. I was doing our steps and I was giving them a farmhouse makeover and if you don't follow me over on Instagram at Bloomwell Home and Garden please follow me over there because I will be showing you the updated their photos over there but while I was painting I put on an audiobook and I put my phone at the top of the stairs and I went ahead and painted the steps and because it was early in the day and I didn't think I'd be needing to go back upstairs, instead of painting every other step, which is the smart thing to do, that way if you have to go up, you still can step on every other step, I went ahead and painted every tread. And when I got to the bottom, I was going to take a picture for Instagram and I had to message my husband. And my daughter had called, I was going to call her back. And my phone was upstairs, so I had to wait until the steps were completely dry before I went back up there. So I'm going to try not to do something silly like that today. Although I have already done that today, I decided at the last minute to brush this on because the, the wood is not even. There's a couple pieces that are a little warped and I thought it'd just be better to brush it on rather than to use a big pad applicator. And I went to town and got all my supplies. I also grabbed some groceries for the week. And I came home, put everything away, and grabbed my bag to come out to do my project. And I had left it at the store. And so I had to go back. Because they couldn't find my bag, I had to go back and get all the products again. So I'm a little late getting started. But don't get discouraged when your project goes that way. It happens to the best of us. I've been doing projects forever. And there's always something that kind of holds you up or goes awry. And it's just part of the journey. It's part of the fun. It's part of the story you're going to tell later and uh, which is one of the reasons I do these videos is to tell our story later and to look back and have a few laughs at how things went. So other than that let's jump right in and get this floor sealed up. This is our porch in 1907 and the man in this picture was actually born in this home and he inherited this home from his family and lived here for quite a long time. I'm going to go ahead and do a sweep dust one more time. This uh, floor had to dry for 48 hours before we used our product on it. So I just want to make sure that there was no dust or anything on the floor. And here are my products. I picked up a stain and waterproofing brush and I'm so glad I went that route. I have a little tray so I can continue to mix my product, keep it mixed together well. and. I'm wearing gloves because this is not a water-based or a water clean-up product. This is an oil product and you want to put it on sparingly. It's not like paint. You don't want to start out with a lot. You can add more if you need to, but you do not want to put on any more than the wood can absorb at the time you put it on because it's absorbed into the wood. It doesn't dry. It sinks in and if there's too much, it dries real tacky and gooey, almost like somebody spilled jelly on your porch. So I'm glad I went the brush route and I'm glad I took the time to blend, blend, blend and not do a lot. And you want to be sure that when you're doing this, you do get each side of the board and the edges really well because 
This too has a dry time and it's 24 hours before you can step on it. So you want to be sure that you get it all even out the first time and get those sides because you won't be walking back. So take your time and get in there. So this is a lot darker than I thought it was going to be, but I'm still way okay with the color. It is warm like the, the rest of the colors on the front of the house, so that is totally okay with me. And like I said, I'm just happy to seal this wood up and protect it and keep it looking good for a long time. Now the floor is done, and like I said, we have our 24-hour dry time, so I'm going to get to work on some other projects. I have these two metal chairs and I call them my bouncy chairs. I've had them for a very, very long time. I purchased them from our local True Value in the mid to early 90s and they are so comfortable. I love them and I have had them all this time. They are still in great shape, but they are ready for a little updating. As you can see here, they used to be hunter green when I purchased them in the 90s. Everybody remember the hunter green that was so popular well then they were brown and now i'm going to go ahead and update them another time but before that because everything is so dirty and dusty on the porch i'm going to give everything a nice deep cleaning to make sure that i have a clean surface to start with days later we ended up having quite the rain thunderstorm and I'm so happy to report that the rain and water just beaded up so nicely on the porch that lightning scared me. I jumped so sorry for the shake but it beaded up so well and it's doing its job to protect our wood for a long time so I'm super excited next project is this table. I had made this table before and used it on another project, but right here it's too long or too wide and I want to make it narrower and I only have a few of these boards left. These were on the original table, but I don't have enough since I stained these a darker color. This is the original wood off the chicken coop from the farm where I grew up, so I want to use it. We're just going to cut the table and then put it back together so it's narrower. 
also want to tackle this door. It's looking pretty bad. The paint is all peeling, so I'm going to go ahead and sand it. Now, this door was not here when we purchased our house. Actually, it was here, but it was hidden. I will insert another photo of the porch, how it looked when we moved in, and it had this plastic... I don't know if it was siding or what it was, but I didn't like it. I thought it looked kind of tacky, so I peeled it off, and then I found a piece of wood, and I took that off, and this door was revealed. On the inside of the house, there is nothing in this room. It has been drywalled over, so the door is not coming into the house, so it's just a fake door now, but I thought it was original to the house, so I wanted to keep it. As you can see, here is the original photo of the house when we purchased it. And there is after I took off the white siding. And the door itself was just chippy white. And when I painted the uh, regular front door, I also painted this one. And it was time for a touch-up. This color is called Indian Bead. And it is from Dutch Boy. And we got it at Menards. In 2015 so I don't know if it's still available but that's the color it was and I was getting ready to touch up this door too and after looking at the doorstep I was deciding that I didn't like it that color anymore so yeah we're gonna fix that I've got my trusty dusty black paint and we're going to go ahead and give this a touch up too and change that. I really like black and the Indian bee together along with the brick. So I think it's going to look good here. It's time to bring everything back and bring in some decor. freshen up the pillows for the chair and I'm using those really cheap two dollar and I think they're 97 cents now I think they were 247 now they're 297 I ordered these pillow covers off of Amazon and there was a pack of four for I think maybe 10 or 12 dollars and they are more or less a 4th of July theme, but I think they go so well with the colors. I'm just probably going to leave them out all summer. I chose for the front porch the two that are shaped like little houses, and those are the ones I'm going to use here, and maybe the others I'll put on the back porch. But 
These pillows are so soft and fluffy that they are such a big pillow, but they squeeze into these smaller cases very easily. I believe these are 18 by 18 and not the 20 by 20 that I usually use, but they fill the pillow really well and they're not hard. They're still really soft. Also, I picked up from a garage sale this week this long burlap table runner and I'm going to use it here on my table. I'm just going to cut it down the size to the size I want and then I will have enough left over that I can put it somewhere else on the porch or use it in another project. This was the last project I wanted to do for the porch. I just wanted to reuse this basket. I thrifted it for a dollar. It's a super cute basket. It just needs a little TLC. There is some fibers coming loose and with a little bit of hot glue and a little bit of pressure, I was able to put those back and snug it all up all over so it looked great. The next thing I did is I got out the black paint and I just put it wherever there was pink and I also applied some black paint to the handle just to make it look a little more uniform. And next what I did is I got out that Thompson's water seal that I used on the porch and I just put it all over the basket just to help secure the basket and make it a little more weatherproof. It does get a little damp out here. This is the way the weather comes from and it can get wet and windy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and preserve the basket with some water seal and have it handy for blankets.
delicious, just as I imagined it would be. And this porch turned out even better than I imagined it would be also. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this journey. And I hope you were inspired and motivated to find that little place where you can take a moment or two to slow down. Summer passes us by so quickly and we just have to get in that moment and slow down and enjoy ourselves. Now I'm gonna take that moment and just relax here on the porch and read a wonderful book. I also wanna mention if you read on devices like your phone, Amazon devices, or even Barnes and Noble devices, there is a website that you can go to and you can put in your genres and styles of reading that you like from mystery to children's books to historical fiction to factual books self-motivators and christian reading they have every topic and you can select several styles of reading and every day you will get a email from them with a list of books that are highly discounted or free i have hundreds and i only get the free books which is great if you have kids home from the summer and you really want to keep up with their reading. It's one time when you don't mind the kids being on their devices. If you have not yet subscribed, please take the time to do that. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. If you enjoyed your visit here at the farmhouse today, please give this video a thumbs up and share it on your social media. That really does help this channel to grow. If there are any topics that you would like me to make a video of, please Put them down in the comments. I will be happy to make those videos for you. Until next time, guys, be blessed, be safe, and I'll see you soon.